Kubernetes is the hottest technology right now, but should you use Kubernetes for everything? No. So I recently came across this uh, Twitter thread where Tom says, you really don't need Kubernetes, I promise. Uh, now that's like extreme, of course, like in Twitter, you, you need to make it shocking. Uh, but he has a point uh, that not everything is well suited for Kubernetes. Uh, Richard says, not even on your CV as a resume. Tom says, not even on your CV, because if you have a Kubernetes on your resume, uh, your salary goes up by a little bit. So I thought I will make a video where I go over uh, some of the considerations you need to keep in mind uh, when adopting Kubernetes, as well as some use cases where there are better alternatives to Kubernetes. All right, let's get started. So first things first, if you are not using Kubernetes, that does not mean you cannot use containers. You can still containerize your code, make it portable so that it can run in any platform or even any devices. Kubernetes is just an orchestrator or a platform to run your container, but there are many other tools, services, and choices to run your container. And some of them are easier. Some of the challenges of Kubernetes are the setup is complex. The knowledge curve is steep, so if your team has very uh, few folks who don't know Kubernetes and you need to go to production as soon as possible, that's a challenge. Kubernetes releases uh, new versions every couple months. For example, Amazon EKS supports four Kubernetes versions at a time, and that's one of the uh, platform which supports the most number of versions. So when the fifth version comes up, the, uh, the oldest version gets deprecated. And it's not just the version releases. Uh, with the new version, sometimes uh, things get deprecated. For example, if you have been using uh, pod security policies, that's gone. If you have been using uh, some Docker runtime specific features such as Docker in Docker, or Docker sockets, Docker is being deprecated in the next Kubernetes release, right? So it's not that uh, you deploy an application on EC2 and then you are pretty much good to run the application for a long time. With each Kubernetes version, your team needs to go do analysis on what's changing and if there's an impact on your application. Because of all this, the day-to operations could be challenging and the landscape is always evolving as in new concepts coming in all the time, such as GitOps is now super popular, uh, OPA, uh, Gatekeeper, they are super popular right now. Uh, so your team needs to uh, evolve with this, learn new tools and keep up with it. And because Kubernetes gives you unparalleled flexibility, there is a, a high chance of uh, deploying workloads which are not optimized and then your bill could be expensive. Now let's go over some use cases where Kubernetes is not suitable and there are better alternatives, event-driven architecture. Uh, so with event-driven, you should use serverless uh, options as well as some of the other open source options. Uh, for example, SQS, EventBridge, SNS, they are AWS native solution. But if you are into open source, you can use Amazon MQ. You can use uh, managed Kafka. Uh, they still give you more power with less management headache uh, for your event-driven architecture. So let's take a look at event-driven architecture real quick. So let's say application A is sending some messages to application B. Application A can simply put the messages into Amazon SQS and a Lambda can process it and insert into application B. Similarly, Amazon EventBridge can do rule-based filtering. Uh, so it can look into your message and based on the values in the message field, it can invoke different Lambdas, such as Lambda A or Lambda B. And from Amazon EventBridge, you can also invoke AWS Step Functions, which can do uh, different workflows. Now the question is, can you implement these architectures in Kubernetes? The answer is yes, but you need to put a lot of effort which is not related to coding your application. So if you want to uh, replicate what Amazon SQS is doing with Kubernetes, you need to write your own Polar. If you decide to run an open source uh, product which is equivalent to Amazon SQS, you need to make it highly reliable, scalable, highly available, etc. If you want to use open source, that's totally fine. Then use the uh, event-driven services that are open source provided by AWS, such as 
Amazon MQ, uh, Manage Kafka, etc. The next use case is little surprising, simple microservices. So I know microservices are one of the use case for Kubernetes, but what if your application just needs to execute some business logic, have some authentication authorization, and that's it. Then you really don't need Kubernetes. You can use application load balancer or API gateway with your application running with EC2 or Lambda or any other services. And this is the kicker. You can still containerize your application if that's what you want to do. You can run your container on regular EC2, Lambda, or ECS, which is much, much uh, simpler container orchestration platform from AWS. You can run it on App Runner and multiple other services. So let's take a look at a design of a, a microservice in Kubernetes as well as with API Gateway. So this is a Kubernetes microservice. So let's say uh, you are running your pods on uh, worker node EC2s and you are doing it with this with managed node group. Now out of the bat, you have to maintain this ingress. Uh, you have to install AWS Load Balancer Controller, uh, the EC2s you are managing. So of course, uh, with managing EC2s, you need to ensure that AMIs are uh, up to date. Unlike regular EC2s, remember, Kubernetes updates their versions, so you need to keep up with that. And let's say you are saving your container image in Amazon ECR, and you are using GitOp such as Argo CD to deploy those containers. Now, if you need to separate uh, these workloads from each other, you need to install Calico Network Policy Engine. Now, for each component of Kubernetes, uh, you need to uh, install some software and maintain it. For example, uh, Prometheus and Grafana is for uh, monitoring and alerting. For logging, you can install Fluentbit which can send the logs to Splunk. Uh, for dynamic scanning, you can use uh, TwistLog, cost optimization, KubeCost. It gives you unparalleled flexibility. You can use mix and match, which is great, but if your microservices is simple, it doesn't need all the extra features that's provided by Network Policy Engine or Argo, uh, Grafana, then there are better alternatives than using Kubernetes. So how does a non-Kubernetes microservice looks like? So you can use uh, application load balancer or Amazon API gateway, and then your containers, remember containers, not just your regular code, can run in Amazon ECS, Amazon EC2, or AWS Lambda. And all these services integrates out of the box with CloudWatch, so monitoring, alerting, logging or even cost optimization techniques now using uh, CloudWatch Container Insights out of the box. So you write your code, you deploy it, and then it starts running. But again, I don't want this video to be uh, very negative on Kubernetes because I love Kubernetes. I, I work with Kubernetes all the time. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is uh, it has time and place. Next use case where there are better alternatives to Kubernetes is databases. Do not run databases on Kubernetes if there are cloud native options available. And again, there are open source solutions that's managed by the cloud provider. For example, if you are using MySQL, PostgreSQL, the open source database, you can use Amazon RDS. It gives you PostgreSQL so that if you decide to move out from AWS, you can migrate easily. But what it does for you is it manages the underlying infrastructure. Uh, it makes it highly available very easily. In case of disaster, you can easily switch to uh, another instance of your database. Almost always, if you use a uh, managed database, even open source managed database, your cost will be cheaper than running it yourself on Kubernetes. The last use case is IoT projects. Containers need to run on the edge. It is not easy to run Kubernetes itself on the IoT device because with Kubernetes, you need to have a control plane, a worker plane, and Kubernetes is a little heavy. Uh, it needs to be lightweight. So consider running it on services like Greengrass. I mentioned that Docker is being deprecated from Kubernetes. Is your workload screwed by this change? Check out this video to find out. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video.